colour is everywhere. On our clothes, our walls, our food, even in the sky above us. But colour isn't just something we see. It's something we feel. Something that shapes the way we think, act and even make decisions. Have you ever wondered why fast food chains are obsessed with red and yellow? Or why hospitals lean towards green and blue? Or why ancient cultures saw colour in completely different ways than we do today? Why are stop signs red? Why is Facebook blue? And how come the ancient Greeks didn't even have a word for the colour blue? The answers reveal just how powerful colour really is. Follow me as I'm going to uncover the truth about colour, the science, the psychology and the hidden meanings across cultures. By the end, you'll never look at colours the same way again. Let's start with the basics. What actually is colour? At its core, colour is just light. Different wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation that our brains interpret as colour. Red light is the longest wavelength, about 700 nanometers. Violet has the shortest, about 400 nanometers. Our eyes only detect this narrow band of wavelengths, the visible spectrum it's called. Outside it lies ultraviolet and infrared, invisible to me and you. But here's a fascinating twist. Colour doesn't exist outside our brains in the physical world. A strawberry doesn't have redness built into it. It reflects certain wavelengths of light and our brains translate those wavelengths as red. Colour, in a sense, is a cunning illusion. And how do we see it? Our eyes have three different types of cone cells, sensitive to red, green and blue. That's why we're called trichromatic. Dogs, for example, are dichromatic. They just see mostly yellows and blues. Meanwhile, the mantis shrimp has up to 16 different types of cones. Scientists at the University of Maryland discover that they can detect polarised light and see colours beyond human imagination. To us, their vision would be like a psychedelic rainbow we can't even begin to picture. Now let's clear up two big myths, black and white. Technically, black isn't even a colour at all. It's the absence of light. White, on the other hand, isn't the opposite of black. It's the combination of all visible wavelengths combined. That's why sunlight appears white, even though it contains every colour of the rainbow. Ever wondered why the sky is blue? It's because of something called Raleigh scattering. Shorter blue wavelengths scatter more as sunlight passes through the atmosphere. That's why the sky looks blue during the day and why at sunset and sunrise, with more atmosphere to pass through, the reds and oranges dominate. Now science explains what colour is, but psychology explains what it does to us, how it acts out. Colours don't just stimulate our eyes, they influence our emotions, our behaviour and even our choices. And advertising companies, governments, and influencers know this and take advantage of it. Take red. Red is powerful. It raises heart rate, increases blood pressure and demands attention. That's why stop signs, fire engines and warning labels are red. It's also the colour of passion, love and danger. A colour that excites us and unsettles us at the same time. An extensive 2007 study found that athletes wearing red were more likely to win in sports. Referees and opponents subconsciously judged them as more dominant. The words Fergie time spring to mind. Then there's blue. Blue is calming, trustworthy. It's no accident that banks, 
tech companies and social media giants use blue. It makes us feel secure. But blue also suppresses appetite. Studies have shown people eat less when served food on a blue plate. 30% less, apparently. Which explains why you rarely see restaurants using blue in their logos. Clever, yet cunning. Green is balance, nature, relaxation. Our eyes are more sensitive to green than any other colour, which is why hospitals and schools often use green interiors. It reduces eye strain and creates a sense of calm. How old are you? Remember this? The Green Cross Code? Emergency! Calling Green Cross Man! Green Crosses! Where do you think you're going, you Dumbo? Green Cross. When you get to the curb, always stop, stop, stop. Sorry, Green Cross. Remember, stop near the curb, not on it. That's the way. Always use the Green Cross code, because I won't be there when you cross the road. Yellow is cheerful but it's also dangerous in excess. It's the brightest visible colour, grabbing attention instantly. That's why important road signs and office highlighters are yellow, but too much yellow can cause anxiety or irritability. Then there's black and white. Black is mystery, power and elegance, but also death and mourning. White in Western culture is purity and innocence. For example, it's the colour most often used by a bride at a wedding. Yet in many Asian cultures, white is the colour of funerals. The psychology of colour isn't universal. It's actually shaped mainly by culture. Culture changes how we see colour. Like I said, white. In the West, brides wear white to symbolise purity. But in parts of India and China, white is worn at funerals. It symbolises death and mourning. Red in the West means passion or danger. In China, it's the colour of prosperity and luck. Red envelopes are given as gifts during the Lunar New Year. In South Africa, however, red is associated with mourning. Purple historically was reserved for royalty. Why? Because purple dye was rare and expensive. Hence the reason of the lack of colour purple in a country's flags. Only the rich and powerful could afford it. Even today, purple carries an air of luxury and prestige. And then there's blue. Did you know that in Homer's Odyssey, there's no mention of the colour blue? The sea is described as wine dark. Some researchers believe the ancient Greeks literally saw colours differently, or at least described them differently. The word for blue didn't even exist in their language. Bizarre, huh? Now let's talk about the weird side of colour. Everyone knows bananas are yellow, but did you know they glow blue under UV light? Just because of compounds formed in the bananas they ripen. What colour is a flamingo? Most would say pink, but they're actually white. They're born white. They turn pink because of carotenoids in the shrimp and algae that they eat. Some women are tetrachromats. This means they have a fourth cone in their eyes, meaning they can see millions more colours than the rest of us. Try this colour test to see how good your eyes are with colour. All you have to do is pick the square that is a different shade to the rest. Maybe you are tetrachromatic. Let me know in the comments how many you managed to spot. How'd you get on? Let us know. Most people think mosquitoes are attracted by light. How many times have you been scared to turn on the light at night with the door open? Mosquitoes are actually attracted to dark colours. Wear black and to them you're a walking buffet. 
Remember the famous dress? Some saw it as white and gold, others as blue and black. That isn't a trick photo. It's your brain trying to interpret ambiguous lighting. Take a look at some of these other colour optical illusions. So what have we learned? Colour isn't just about what we see, it's physics, it's biology, it's psychology, and it's deeply cultural. It can calm us, excite us, guide us, or even deceive us. It shapes the world in ways we often take for granted. Next time you walk outside, look around. Notice the colours, the reds that demand your attention, the blues that calm you, the greens that relax you the yellows that shout at you. And remember, those colours are shaping your experience, your emotions, even your decisions. But try not to let them deceive you. You be the judge. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed exploring the secret power of colour, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Because when we understand colour, we don't just see the world differently, we see ourselves differently too. Till next time, take care.